You're at 109 right now. So, Jesus. Jesus. That's what this is one. That's what this is one is all about. This is about. Sound drunk. My goodness. This one is about Jesus. I just watched Mel Gibson. Well, I just watched a short on YouTube uh, featuring Mel Gibson, uh, an interviewer at some event. And the interviewer asked Mel Gibson if he's going to make a Passion of the Christ 2. And he responds, yes, he is. It's going to be about the resurrection of Christ. And Mel Gibson then says that it's going to be a movie. Um, he says that it can't be a movie that's um, linear, that's told in a linear fashion. Because um, there are points or there are events out of sequence, out of chronological sequence, um, that must be shown in order to express the importance or or in order to help explain other events that happened, you know, before. So it's going to be out of sequence. And he says, yeah, that's basically what he says. Man, all I can think of is my my story about my experiences with 109 and how yeah in order for me to tell the story i'd have to jump around you know to to make connections to draw connections between events that occurred for instance um in 2018 when i was in no i wasn't in korea in 2018 i was in ethiopia and i walked past the door and i noticed that the door had 109 uh, written on it and i was perplexed by that um you know by that by seeing that because it the door was on the second floor it's doors aren't supposed to have like traditionally conventionally if the door is on the second floor you're going to see like the numbers 200s twos threes four i mean twos twos right and actually the door was did have a 200 number on it that was affixed to it to the door um but it, it someone had written 109 on the door <clears throat> so all right so i had that experience in ethiopia but then because i had that experience in ethiopia it means it meant so much more to me when in 2019 and i was when i was in um oman and that car cut me off on the day that I learned of Nipsey's uh, murder and 109 was on the license plate. Because in my mind, I was saying to myself, like, basically, I was focusing on Nipsey in that moment because I had learned that he had been killed. And then because 109 was was a very real like thing to me, it, it was like whenever I saw those numbers, I would calm down. I literally would calm. I, I, well, I imagine that those numbers meant something to me. And so I used that to help calm myself down. Like, hey, those are my numbers. You know, I would say to myself, all right, well, that's a good omen. You saw the, you saw your numbers, so you're good. Right? It's it's part of, you know, it's part of, part of the way that you, you talk to yourself. It's just like, yo, relax, man. You got this, you know. You, you can handle it. When I saw 10-9 or 109, I was like, you got this. Relax. Don't worry. You know, there was reason to stress out because I was thousands of miles away from home. And, you know, my 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 favorite rapper uh, at of that moment was killed, you know. So I, I was already thinking of, like, Jesus. Well... Maybe I wasn't. I was. I, I definitely thought like, man, Nipsey is special. Now he's gone. He's dead. And I was like, man, I saw those numbers that day. But the idea that I had seen those numbers in Ethiopia too, because basically my whole trip, my whole tour of Ethiopia was like a very uh, religious, um, it was sort of like a pilgrimage, you know? I saw the angels with afros, brown skin, afro. I saw them on the ceilings of the of the church 
And I was I got the whole feeling like, yeah, like Jesus is black. I got that from Ethiopia. So when Nipsey passed, and for all of the achievements that Nipsey, you know, had done, and and if, as I thought about Nipsey's life, his legacy, and, and thought about you know what was going on, and then everything just sort of just pointed to Jesus because it was, but not only for me, but for other people because just this past week, a few days ago, the the verdict, Nipsey's killer received sixty years. What a coincidence! Sixty years, right? Because they're the rolling 60s gang and all of that. But someone in the comments, when that news broke, someone, um, Slauson Girl, posted about it. And she said that, um, well, she broke the news. And then people were commenting un- under this uh, Instagram post. And they were saying things like, one one particular person said, man, this is crazy. Um, Nip died at 33. That's the same age D- um, Jesus died, 33. And uh, Nip's uh, mission on earth was to help and heal people, heal his community. You know, another thing that Jesus was doing. Um, And then uh, Jesus was betrayed by a Judas. He was betrayed by a traitor. And essentially, how could I mean, how else can you describe um, Nipsey's killer? But a Judas, a a betrayer, because they were from the same gang. You dig? So. Um, yeah, that's what it is. I think he might have mentioned something else, but that was someone else's idea. I'm glad they mentioned it and put it all into perspective because that's basically my, you know, summation. I'm in the desert of all places and I'm like, I'm affected by this man's um, death. And I'm like, I'm trying to put the pieces together. And I see 109 on the day that he's murdered. Just within an hour of, of of getting the news, waking up and getting the news, within that hour, I see 109. And then I go back to the, the time that I saw 109 in Ethiopia, and then I made a connection between that. Like, I was learning about Ethiopia. I know Nipsey's country was Eritrea, but Ethiopia and Eritrea were once part of the Aksumite Empire. That's how that... that that connection was made. In fact, Nipsey's father is in Eritrea now, according to Instagram. His Instagram posts show him in Eritrea. That's biblical land. That's land that was uh, conquered or or um, the queen of Sheba reigned over, over uh, that land. So, like, all of this information that I was gathering, you know, I... It was it was a climax. It was the moment when Nipsey died that uh, that I, I I what synergy I synergized, I aggregated all this information and and it just everything just said one thing to me like Nipsey was the one. Now I'm not saying Nipsey is Jesus. Um, I'm saying Nipsey is like the closest thing, the closest we've come to a Jesus. That's what I'm saying. You know. Psh. So when I when I'm listening when I when I listen to Mel Gibson talk about you know making a, a movie about Jesus, the fact is that Jesus is the most popular, probably the most popular he's ever been. <laughs> you got Kanye West releasing records, Jesus is King, talking about he's a God, and just you know and and he's speaking and everything that he talks about, he's saying, you know. Uh, in the Lord's name, Amen. You know, when he finishes what he's saying, he said, "In the Lord's name, in Jesus' name, Amen." This is what he said. So, it is what it is, and um, yeah. So it's all about Jesus. You know what's interesting? I was I remember when I was walking down the street in New York about eight months ago. I don't know how long. It's probably eight nine months ago now. I'm just walking down the street and I passed what seemed to be a homeless man. It seemed to be a homeless man on the street. Or maybe he wasn't homeless. Maybe he was just an artist because the guy was painting or no, he wasn't painting. He was sketching. The guy was sketching. And um, as I was passing him by, he said, Jesus. And I looked back and I thought, 
man, that guy is focused on Jesus. He's drawing or he's getting inspiration from Jesus. He's writing down things and he's whatever he's drawing, like his mind is on Jesus. And I'm, you know, that kind of supports what I'm talking about. You know, you could be walking down a random street, a homeless person will be there and the homeless person will say, you know, thank Jesus, thank the Lord, God bless you, something, you know? Well, I remember I was in Saudi Arabia and I was um, leaving the American embassy and I passed a couple, uh, passed a couple who were just talking. And as I passed, I heard them say, Jesus. And it probably was more like, Jesus, you know, or like, Oh man, we have to do the we have to pay this or do this at the embassy. Ah, oh, Jesus. And I just happen to walk past them. There are there are just these moments that stick out, and it's just like, geez, man. Wow. But the point here is that, you know, it's on everybody's mind. Everybody, everybody is thinking about Jesus in some form or fashion. You've got multi-millionaire. Um, multi-millionaire, what are they, uh, you know, actors, directors, movie, whomever. And, and they're, they're, they want to tell the, the story of Jesus and they're going to do it. Mel Gibson said he's going to do it. 2023, the passion of the Christ to the resurrection, you know, I don't know if they're going to, if they're talking about starting production or if they're talking about releasing, I don't know what's going on. I'm in my own little world and you are privy to it just by listening to me ramble on. Yeah, just rambling on. Yeah. Yep, those numbers 10 and 9. And then the the idea that 10 9 not only is it my birthday, not only is it um the numbers that I've seen you know, coincidentally in just peculiar places throughout my travels. But then also there's that, that biblical verse, Romans 10, 9, that says, you know, if you speak with your mouth and say that Jesus is your savior, say that you love Jesus, then you will be saved. Like all of this adds, adds to it. All of this just, just comes together. So I guess I want to say that, yeah, Nipsey was hecka, hella special. And I, for me, Nipsey, yeah, Nipsey was the one. And Nipsey was the most, like, he was a human. I mean, his name was God Will Rise. Like, wow. That's just, wow, that's interesting. I don't have any explanations. I don't have anything to proclaim. There are no declarative statements that I want to I want to make other than uh, statements about my experiences and say this is what I saw. It's a fact. That's all I want to utter. And the idea, the fact, the fact is, I've traveled to forty countries. <clears throat> I had some bizarre moments when I encountered a familiar set of numbers: one, zero, and nine. Pshh. That's all I want to say. That's all that this this whole channel is all about. And I just keep doing it. You know, I just keep coming back to this uh, this medium, the podcast. You're at 109 right now. That's what it is. That's what it is. You could ask Giz. And then what's really dope is uh, Nas and the song that he did, My Bible. Is that Nas, My Bible? And he has um, Nipsey. He has Nipsey. Um, you know, Nip Nip speaks and introduces his song. Nip's Nip's voice introduces the song. I'll I'll play it. They're gonna play us out. Hey, yeah. Hey. We gonna lose this shit like this, my nigga. Yeah, do I walk through the valley of infidels, suckers? Who adhere to sucker religions? Life's the Bible. We live in biblical times.
you're at one hundred and nine right now.